Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Sandy Writes. I still don't know what to do with my hair so we're just going to not talk about it. So earlier I was thinking about new things I could bring to my channel and one of the ones I really want to do in video form is book reviews because I do them like on my blog and on book, not book reads, and on Goodreads but I want to bring them here as well. The first book I want to talk about is this one by John Green. I read it last year so this review is probably very late but you know I think this book means the most to me on a personal level so I want to talk about it now. When does this come out? Goodreads, John Green, so this book came out October 10th last year so it's been a few months but I read it on October 29th and I think I finished it all in one day because I was just stuck into this story. At this point, it had been a while since I read a new John Green book, and this one was definitely worth the wait. I have no idea how to say the name, is it Aza? 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 Ah, uh, let's go with Aza for now. A 16 year old Aza is pursuing the mystery of a missing billionaire, and there's a hundred thousand dollar award at stake, so her best friend Daisy is eager to investigate. As much as Aza wants to be part of the mystery, and present in her new relationship with an old friend, She's trapped within the advertising spiral of her own thoughts. Before I get into the review properly, I just want to talk about how much this book made me feel. I've brushed it before, but I'm a person who doesn't feel emotion strongly. And it's a side effect of my own mental illness. So first of all, mental illness was a reason this book related to me so strongly. But this book hit home so hard to me that I was like laying in my bed about to cry by the end of it. In like a good way, not like just crying out of sadness at three in the morning. And it's one of the first sad slash relatable books that made me feel an actual emotion rather than just feeling numb. So I had it with lots of books before that I love and when they're over I just feel so empty at the end of it. But the book's taken something away from me. This book really gave something to me. So this book is Own Voices and it's greatly inspired by John Green's own mental illness. So it's a very accurate representation. <coughs> Unlike some of the things I've read recently. So moving on to the actual review. So that the number one great thing about this book is that it is about authentic mental illness. The representation about mental health in this book is ugly and it's disturbing and it's frustrating, but it's definitely not hopeless. The word OCD is never actually used, but that mental illness is one of the main focuses of the story. And it's also one I suffer from, not as greatly as the characters in the book, but it's one that I can strongly relate to. And it's also very refreshing to see OCD mentioned in mental illness books, because they normally focus so much on like depression, anxiety, suicide. So it's nice to see representation for OCD. And this is a very real and brutal portrayal of OCD. Not just the stereotypical version that appears all throughout literature and the media, the thought spirals and the psychology behind the illness is what makes it more brutal and that makes you experience what Arza is going through and not just watching it from a distance. So additionally Arza also suffers from anxiety and the way that her experiences are described speaks so intensely, specifically the metaphor for the spiral that is across the cover, the advertising spiral of her own thoughts. And I'll ne I don't think I'll ever get sick of John's like talent for metaphors especially like all the Fault in Our Stars ones. And his talent for like finding the perfect word to describe something that feels so indescribable. But another great thing about this book is smart characters. And one thing that makes John Green stand out from so many YA authors, for me at least, is that he writes intelligent teenage characters. And he acknowledges that teenagers can be smart and knowledgeable and understand complex ideas. And he doesn't portray them as unintelligent just because they're young. And I keep, I'm going to keep referring to Fault in Our Stars even though I'm not talking about that book but I love how pretentious his characters can be because that's how I am sometimes and that's how so many people I've met are. The sheer amount of knowledge that these characters have is refreshing and I am here for smart people to be written in YA books. That's what I want this year. I want smart relatable characters rather than just like the whole dumb teenage trope that everyone is like relying on. The next thing is the plot. The plotless novel is very different to his other works. 
So if you think about Fight Night Stars, Paper Towns, Looking for Alaska, they are kind of romance based and then like that's what pushes the narrative forwards. And this, and Turtles All the Way Down is very different from that. Not in a bad way, but this plot was more subtle and more simplistic in a way. There's an internal plot and an external one. They both happen simultaneously and it makes you think you're following one, then it turns out that the other is the central focus. The plot also focuses a lot more on the characters and their experiences rather than the event-based storyline that is also occurring. Now I'm going to talk about Arza and Daisy's friendship and it may contain a little bit of a spoiler. I, th I think it is a spoiler. So I loved Arza and Daisy as friends and it was mostly a good female to female relationship that isn't built on obsessing over boys, which if you read a lot of YA and like contemporary novels you will know that a lot of girl friendships are just about boys. So I liked this relationship because it wasn't about that, but also Daisy, this is a spoiler by the way, Daisy said so many cruel things about Arza and most of it wasn't dealt with at all, let alone properly. It was just pushed aside. And like Daisy even makes a character in her fanfiction which is based on Arza to basically vent about how exhausting and selfish she is. But then they both just forgive each other in the end. They don't even acknowledge it. Arza's just like, sure. And that annoyed me. And the final mini standout point of this book is technology, mainly texting and blogs. So we live in a world that revolves around technology, so it's interesting to see how John integrated this into his story without making it tiresome. As I know a lot of more recent YA books that I've like told entirely in like letter format or entirely in texting, and that's tiresome, it's unique, but it's difficult to read. So I love how John like seamlessly integrated this into this story. He includes it organically and it's always relevant to the story in the light of the characters without making it gimmicky or just using it to fill up the pages. Typically John Green novels, I think I've said this already in this video but I have a very short memory. So typically his novels have romance as the main focal point but here the romance takes a back seat and the front seat is occupied by Aza and her own mental health journey. I'm really tempted to flip back to like page one and read the book again. Because I live in the belief that it's always more fun to watch a movie the second time because you already know the twists and turns so you can sit back and enjoy it and know that it's going to be alright. And I want to be able to experience this book for the second time to become like lost in the pages again and know exactly how things are going to end but be able to spend like so much more time just falling like deeply in love into the metaphors. So overall John Green is back in the world of YA and he's doing better than ever. <laughs> And um, I gave this book a five star rating on Goodreads, and now I'm going to read you some quotes. Anyone can look at you. It's quite rare to find someone who sees the same world as you. True terror isn't being scared. It's not having a choice on the matter. You're both the fire and the water that extinguishes it. You're the narrator, the protagonist, and the psychic. You're the storyteller and the story told. You're somebody something, but you're also your you. The problem with happy endings is that they're either not really happy or not really endings, you know? In real life, some things get better and some things get worse. And then eventually you die. So thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it because this is like the first review video I made and I think I enjoyed it. I, di I did enjoy it. It's, it's just fun to be able to like document all my thoughts in a book that I can look back on it. And instead of like reading through this big review I've wrote that actually has a lot of typos in, I can just listen to myself stumble over the words. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye!